So what was Pulse Audio not offering? I think a lot of people have a lot of negative opinions about Pulse Audio. And I think it's a good thing. <laughs> we've, we've left that yeah. one in the past. But for what you were doing here, what, what could it not do that GStreamer kind of became a requirement at the time? So uh, what Pulse Audio was missing and probably still is, is an API that allows you to build filters mm. that will process audio. That, that was the main reason this streamer was there. Mm. Because you can load a virtual device, you can move the applications to this virtual device, you can make the audio of your virtual device to go to the sound card. What Pulse Audio is missing is what should be in the middle. Mm. Uh, how are you going to put your plug plugins processing the audio? So Pipewire has this <laughs> by design. Uh, it has its own API that allows you to write your filters, <laughs> it just insert it in the middle. So at first we were still using the streamer when I moved to Pipewire because, well, you are rewriting a considerable amount of code. So initially, I tried to do as little change as possible, but I already knew I could not use the stream. That was the reason why I moved to Pipewire. So the mm -hmm. works for that, mm -hmm. but it has some challenges. When I first, my first attempts actually didn't work well. Uh, there was a difficulty involving the synchronization of GStreamer pipeline clock with pipeline clock on the virtual device. Eventually, I was lucky enough to find a combination of parameters that made the whole thing work. But the first attempts, uh, uh, there was a lot of uh, lack of synchronization, like mm. say between video and audio. That, that was the, the the main problem in my first attempt is still using Python. It was the lack of synchronization between video and the audio when I put the stream in the middle. So right. I'm going to remember now which parameters solved this, but eventually I found a combination of parameters that made the whole thing usable. Mm. So all these little problems, uh, they naturally go away when you use Pipewire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at, by that, uh, after moving to it, there was no need to stay on this trend. Uh, and from a, a usability point of view, there were some side effects that were hard to deal with when you are using this stream for that. Because, uh, for example, when people open uh, the desktop or the management, mm. or Pavu control, Pave control, I'm not sure how people tell that. This streamer pipeline will be seen as the stream of any other other player. Mm. So sometimes something broke the other group because it is not clear that it had, a, let's say, higher purpose. Uh, so sometimes people move that it around, the world was broken. So uh, it didn't never it never felt like a proper solution. Mm -hmm. That's that's the main that's one of the disadvantages. But it served as well for quite a long time. It always kind of felt like this add-on on top of Pulse Audio rather than being something that like nicely fits in there. Yeah, it was more a, a hack than a proper solution. Right, right. That's the truth. Uh, it is. It is not the, the the better way to solve the problem. It was the only available way to solve the problem. Right, right. <laughs> it, it is more like that. There was nothing else that could be done uh, without the other server providing the proper tools to do that. Well, that unless you wanted to issue. fundamentally change it and make it, you know, rely on the Jack API, which creates a whole nother set of problems. Uh, 
<laughs> I, I, I think that before starting these effects, I, I tried a few times to, to, to put global effects on my desktop by a combination of uh, LV2 plugins and the uh, Jack 7. It was not a pleasant experience. Right, right. <laughs> I eventually just stopped the whole thing. But one of the problems that uh, people, some people don't got to like also. I'm not sure how this is nowadays. Uh, 20 years ago, people really hated also. Uh -huh. uh, I never shared that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that feeling, but one of the, the problems of not using post audio mm -hmm. and now pipe wire is this is the kind of application where you want an easy way to move audio streams to its virtual device. Mm -hmm. So you do not want to, to all the time to manually put applications there. Right. You want the application to be able to do that itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure the Jack 7 provides this. Maybe it does. Jack is I all manual remember. routing. Yeah, I, I do not think this is Actually, PostWord was the one that brought this to the Linux world. I do not think that before it, this was possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably not. So, the next major shift, actually, wait, when did, hold up, let me just think this one through my, <laughs> I'm forgetting how to pronounce words now. Um, <laughs> so, did the shift to Pipewire and GTK4 happen at the same time, or was one of them much earlier than the other? Pipewire probably came first. Okay, okay. If I remember well, I th I think that the previous major change was using GTK4. Mm -hmm. So, I guess I can probably I can probably guess why the move was done from GTK3 to GTK4. It was the logical next step. But if you have some more comments on why that change was made, and also the addition of, I were you using Libid Waiter as well? Yes, mm -hmm. what eventually I came to regret, but uh, let, let's talk about that later. <laughs> but uh, from GTK3 to 4, besides the usual, it is the next version, uh, GTK4 brought something that uh, it was really a, a step forward, mm -hmm. that it was how you deal with list view there. Mm -hmm. Doing the, dealing with lists in GTK4 is a lot better than it felt in GTK3. Mm -hmm. But it was not a move uh, without resistance from some users. Not mm -hmm. as much as now, but still, uh, GTK4 was the version that left behind completely tray icons. So not everybody was pleased. Uh, when we moved to GTK4, mm -hmm. taking this into consideration. Uh, but it was definitely less resistance when you are moving from QT to GTK and back and forth. No, 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 <laughs> no doubt. Mm -hmm. But uh, three icons were, uh, were something that people requested from day one. But I soon realized that they would not be a thing anymore in the GTK ecosystems. I said, no, there's no point in, in, in fighting against the, the toolkit we are using. So, but uh, from a development point of view, uh, the new way to deal with uh, lists in GTK was one of the main reasons why I wanted to use it instead of GTK3. Mm -hmm. When did you make that swap to GTK4? Was it early on in GTK4, or did you let things sort of mature a little bit? I assume as it was available in Arch Linux repositories. 
not sure how early on that was exactly, mm -hmm. but I started to play with it yeah, as soon as it was. This is more or less what always happens. Uh, when I see something new, I usually, well, I will wait for it to be available in Atlantis repositories because this is already going to be too soon for many people already. Right, so right. no need to go beyond that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're going in beta releases, that's going to create a, a lot of problems. Like, at Arch Linux doesn't always get things immediately, but you can at least assume yes. that when they have it, it's packaged as a stable version. So other distros will get it eventually. 